The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. Caution. You are now entering the all-consuming realm of Shay's paranormal chat, where the things that are better left unsaid are actually said. Shut up and sit down. You're listening to Shay's paranormal chat. Paranormal podcasting done Shay's way. Tons of fun. Dude, seriously? A bit sarcastic. Hashtag investigator, not hunter. But always real. Hashtag data, not evidence. Don't get your panties in a twist. Oh my god, really? This is real, raw conversation. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Good evening, TGIF. As always, not only is it a great day because it's freaking Friday, but you get to be here with me and the one and only, the beautiful... Kelly McCurville. Hi. Hi. I, you know, I think you're the one sporting this beauty thing today. Look at you do that little hair flip as we get going. Oh, uh, wait. Sorry. Here, here. I'll put my scrunchie in. Sorry. No, don't do that. Your hair is down. It's never down. It's Crazy. down, it, like, within the first four hours I watch it. Wash it, and then it's up. Unless, and, I, unless I have to go somewhere and pretend to try to impress somebody, which... I don't try to impress anybody too good. <laughs> it's it doesn't I happen. I my hair before I came down. Does that count? I went to bed with it wet last night, so um, it's kind of out of control. Hey, I wash my hair three God. times a week, so that's yeah. you know, I'm still in my pajamas. My Does that pajamas count? Don't differ much from my work clothes, but these are technically the clothes I put on to go to work today. My pajamas are my work clothes because I work at home for Paranormal <laughs> so and this I. network. So, like, like the bra is, like, once-in-a-lifetime thing. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my mom was over the other night, and we were just talking. I don't remember what we were doing. And finally, she looks at me. She says, just how many pair of skull leggings do you own? I'm like, several. <laughs> I don't and own any leggings. I don't I know. own any leggings. I own sweatpants and those type of things because... I still haven't lost enough weight to wear leggings. Shit. If that's the requirement, then I need to take these off. I'm going for comfort. Well, you Comfort. Know. You know, if you can't deal with my cottage cheese, then I can't handle that. So. They hurt my pee-pee. Am I allowed to say that? Sorry, Matt. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Matt's going to kill me. And I'm sober. Oh, oh what? A, this what? show hasn't even started, and it's completely off the rails. Yeah, if Thanks. you heard the last time Jason was on... It's okay, if, if that's the case, you're buying the size too small. Just, just gonna throw that out there. What? In my case, too big. They, never mind. Anyway, never mind. Never mind. Let, we have a guest, don't we? We do. <laughs> Join us next week as we continue this conversation for Shay's Paranormal Chat, the hundredth episode with no guests, with no holds bar. <laughs> And, and we're going to be in trouble. Wear leggings. <laughs> yeah, we'll be in trouble. Oh, so. my God. Okay, who's our guest tonight, my dear? <laughs> uh, see, she keeps me in line. The one and only, Jason Hewlett. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, How are you? Hey, 
He's already been on once. He knew what yeah, he, he kind of knew what he was in for. He was crazy enough to come back. Yeah. <laughs> he agreed within five minutes of the last show ending. He's like, "Yeah, I'm all in." I'm like, "Good, the, the, grab This is like your hail marys, yeah, no, right? This is your punishment yeah. for your sins throughout the last couple months. No, or? he had no chance to dwell on it. He couldn't rethink it. He couldn't relive it. <laughs> he agreed, booked the date. I'm like, he's back. Yeah, yeah, I was booked yeah. in so fast I couldn't think about it. It was yeah. just kind of sorted out immediately after the last show. But I, I had a great time, so it's yeah. really good to be back. No, it is. Shay, thank you. Oh no, it I... was probably one of those spontaneous. I'll just say yes. She'll never follow through things, and <laughs> and then when you actually said, "Hey, what's the next date?" and he's like, "Shit, she met that. Oh my god." Yeah. yeah, that's the same as my dating life. <laughs> oh my gosh you know oh, if anybody hasn't listened before to uh, Jason on my show or on my show in general uh, Jason was on I think six weeks ago is that a good it was right before Halloween I think actually yeah. it was like it was a while already that's more than six weeks ago hun yeah well, just saying yeah. quarantine I can't tell it blurs It'll the days blur yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was a great episode, and I re-listened to most of the show. I got three quarters through, and I didn't finish, um, just as a reminder, because I can't remember everything. So, but anybody that has not listened to the first episode, Jason, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm... I guess, like, so I've been a paranormal investigator now since roughly 2003, but I've always been interested in the subject matter. And what sort of my interest in it kind of morphed into doing a YouTube web series, like a documentary series called We Want to Believe, which is on Joe Blow Horror Videos at the moment. And it's uh, basically we take a serious look at paranormal investigations. A lot of shows on TV present it in a very Hollywoodized dramatized format you, you know it's supposed to be reality but you can kind of tell that it's not they, they set up scares through editing and music and all that kind of stuff and our show takes a very realistic view i'm a, been a paranormal investigator for a while pete wren who is sort of the lead investigator on the show and my partner in crime in these matters has been doing this for 27 years all over the world um and he sort of headed vancouver paranormal society for a good 10 years so we we look at it really seriously um, we don't over dramatize. We film the investigation as it happens and just compiles it for people to watch, presenting whatever, whatever evidence we found. Uh, so that's kind of one of the big things we do. Peter and I also recently authored a book called I Want to Believe One Man's Journey into the Paranormal, which is about his experiences as a paranormal investigator. And it's out right now from Beyond the Fray Publishing. So that's kind of the, the, the meat and potatoes of what we do, um, as well as we're we're paranormal investigators when we can actually go out and paranormal investigate. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so we do that. We recently formed the Canadian Paranormal Foundation. Uh, we sort of left Vancouver Paranormal and created our own group, and we're, we're just sort of getting that up and running right now, using a lot of the people involved with We Want to Believe the show, but as in just a way out and investigating. We don't all, Whatever we do on that doesn't always end up in the show and vice versa. So exactly. that's in a nutshell kind of, I guess, a little bit about who I am. All right. I so. do have to... We're going to get to the book in a second here, but you kind of downplayed your role on We Want to Believe. If I'm not, I could be wrong because, you know, I'm dumb, but you're a host, you're a host, writer, producer, uh, and a director, I think, of We yeah, Want to I, Believe. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the, basically the, the writer, director for the show, plus yeah. I'm one of the investigators and I film it. Um, and I guess I technically created it. So I'm kind of do, I do a lot on yes. the program. Um, but it's really, it's a group effort too, because Peter's kind of the lead investigator and the, kind of the brains and he sets up a lot of the investigations and we've got a good, a really great editor in Jason D. Morris, uh, Sean Knuffelberg, he does the music and produces. We got a whole team involved in this program. Yeah, there's six or seven of you. There's, yeah, there is. There's, there's, uh, so myself, Peter, Sean, Marcus Floor, who's the cinematographer, Sarah Jane, who's an investigator, Brandon Knuckleberg, who's Sean's son, who's also a cinematographer, and then it's produced by John Fallon, who runs Arrow in the Head, and he's a filmmaker of renown, and it's executive produced by Peter Marcus and then Barry Garabedian from Joe Blow. So yeah. There's a lot. It's a, it's a big group involved in making this. Um, so, hi, peeps. 
Thank you for lending us your Jason. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, it's it's really great to work with them. They're all people who believe in the project and who believe that in showing the paranormal field, this is the pseudoscience of it, in, an, in as accurate a way as possible. Because so much in popular culture in Hollywood just sort of shows it in, in a different light that doesn't do it justice, I think, and puts a lot of false pretenses into the public mind about we what they're seeing. We talked about that a little bit last time. And I think these are my words, not Kelly's, not Jason's, but just dragons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, excuse me. I had to cough. Um, no, but you, you wear a lot of hats and you do a lot of things and you're very down to earth and you um, share things that most paranormal investigators especially on youtube that want popularity don't and that's what i love about you the cop thing we talked about it last time yeah <laughs> you know most people would be like let's not show that kelly does I, not I, fill her no, in i'm raising an eyebrow i need this i need to hear this story the cop, the cop okay the cop thing. When, when we were filming and there's, there's a two-part episode called the barn that we were called to investigate and it was it was a woman named d who, who would have these mysterious water droplets show up on her, like out of nowhere. They'd just start appearing on her body. So we went and we investigated it. And I guess halfway through the investigation, during, I was inside doing an EVP session with Sarah and Brandon and filming it. The other team was outside. And I guess because it, this barn is on this road, people have dri driven by and saw us with cameras and thought they were guns. So they oh. called the police on us. And three three officers showed up, the Royal, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, thinking that we were active shooters. That's how it was reported uh, oh during the middle of the investigation. And so we resolved that. We managed to resolve it with nobody getting shot, which was great. Um, but it was just, yeah, but we kept that in because that, to me, is great. That happened, and it, it makes for interesting television, for lack of a better word, oh, right? Yeah, and, it, yeah. and it's it was real. Quite funny yeah. in the end, that, too, how that's it the shit that happens out. to us. Yeah. I was gonna, you know, and I guess I'm thinking back, I should be grateful the times the cops have shown up, there were no guns drawn. Um, yeah. But but it is funny, Shay. I mean, you'll, you know, I'm out on an investigation with these three big bulky guys and two cops pull in. They make me walk over across the field shot to them. I'm like, <laughs> really? Come on. Like, yeah, that, that's I was nice. just waiting for Jason to be like, pat it down. Like, I yeah. showed the position, but they, they didn't funny, go that like... far. It didn't, it didn't, because fortunately, Sean, Sean uh, works in security, so he works with the police a lot, so he knew exactly what to do, you know what I mean? Like, you put your hands out, take your sunglasses off, show you're not, like, you know, risk at all. Yeah. We explained it, showed the equipment we're using, yeah, yeah. and they all thought it was kind of neat, you know, probably had fans of the show after that, but it was just the fact that it happened. So, but, I have discovered that the quickest way to make a cop, some cops go away. This is either going to go really bad for you or really good for you, is tell them that you talk to dead people, and they just run. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had two cops out there and one of them was pretty interested and the other one who was a little bit older gentleman and he's like and what do you do when you're out here i'm like well i talked to the dead people in the building he's like uh-huh and he gets in his <laughs> car and drove away That's right. he's like, okay <laughs> i have a lot of family members of the cops so i i can see both sides yeah, and, but you know, no, the other guy ended up going into the building with us and looking around a little bit. So that's why that cool. was cool, right? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he was telling us other places, and then I'm like, "So can we go there?" He's like, "No." I'm like, well, then stop telling me about cool places. I can't go investigate. <laughs> hey, I, I, Nicole and I, my sister, um, my sister and I co-found a team, Sis Paranormal Super Supernatural Investigation Services. We got pulled over once, and he. We're on the highway, so he came to the passenger. I was in the passenger side, and he came to my window. And he's like, he's like, what are you doing? Blah, 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 whatever. Not even that. He that's even more than he said. He's like, are you guys paranormal investigators? And I'm like, oh, how do you know? How do you know this? How do you? I was like freaked out. I'm like, how do you know? I'm like, what's going on? He's like, there's a bumper sticker on the car. Oh. And he's like, oh, I'm so into this. He's like, yeah, don't take it. He just pulled us over to talk locations and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I was like, but I was so freaked out. How do you know this? I was like. Yeah. Uh, 
It's like psychic cops or something. Yeah, I, mean, I <laughs> thought he was. Show. I was. I was so scared. <laughs> and it's funny how observant people are, and we forget like what our surroundings are. Because yeah, I've had people approach me in public. They're, oh my god, you're a ghost hunter, and I'm like, who are you, and how did you know this? Like your sweatshirt. I'm like, oh yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Wearing the team yeah. shirt, right? Yeah, <laughs> been there, been there. Oh, all right. So, I don't know you, so if I ask questions that have been asked before, I'll apologize. And I'm sure this got asked, but so how did you get into the paranormal and into all the other stuff? Was there something that kind of kicked it off, or is it just an interest that you have? It was, I mean, it's always been an interest of mine since I was a kid, but I, I had uh, I had a couple things happen to me when I was younger. One of them, I was going, I was probably about five or six and I was, a buddy of mine was going to sleep over. So I went with my mom to go pick him up and we were in the car and she'd gone up to the house to get my friend and was talking to the mom and I was alone in the back of the car. Um, and it was a Pontiac, it was a Gremlin. I can't remember what company made Gremlins, but they're oh, ugly cars. I remember that. So they're awful. ugly. They are ugly. They are. And, and yours so was purple. Back, for him. Yours it was is. purple or blue. Yes, it was a purple Gremlin. Purple. I did talk I... about this. Um, that's Okay. So I was sitting in the back of the No, I know it from the video. Or uh, a right. video. <laughs> Waiting for them to come. And I was the only one. I'm looking around out at the street. And there's no one around. And the next thing I know, this face appears in the back window. This horrible, like, mongoloid kind of face. And it's there one second and then gone. But it freaked me out enough that I, like, ducked down to the bottom of the floor. And kind of went back up and I'm looking around. And these footsteps come up and it's my buddy. And I'm like, were you just outside the car? And he's like, No. And I'm like, did you see anybody? And he's like, no, there was no one around, sort of thing. And I said, explain what I saw. And he's like, that's weird. My mom comes up, I asked her if she saw anything. She's like, no, you're probably just imagining it. But it stuck in my, my head. Like, it was the first time that I'd seen anything mysterious that I couldn't quite place. Um, and then about six, seven years later, so my early teens, uh, where, we have, where, where I live, there's, there's a lot of woods and lakes. My family had this cabin we'd go to every year. And I'd usually bring a friend of mine, and me and my buddy, Mike Stewart, would always go, or whoever I had out, we'd, we were allowed to free range out into the woods, and we'd always take this path into the free woods range. and back. Free range, yeah. It was like the 80s, right? So <laughs> I just love that, that, that term that. for it. We were allowed to free range. Yeah, we could just go. <laughs> be home for lunch, dinner, yep. bedtime. Yep. Otherwise, Street get lights out of here. come on, it's time to get your butt home. Yeah. So we would, we'd gone out after dinner, and we were... We'd been out all day, come home for dinner, we're going back out, and we're taking the same route, and underneath this tree... It hadn't been there before was a little fire pit, a little lean to with a bone in it, like a cleaned out bone underneath this tree. We thought that was really weird. And we're kind of studying this thing because it wasn't there earlier in the day. And we're looking at it. And we're just kind of, yeah, I don't know. And it's just it's getting dark. And it's like, I'm not comfortable. And he, my buddy's like, no, me neither. And we're this is Bigfoot country too, by the way, uh, up here in Canada where I live. So we're like, Let, let's just go back. Like, let's go back to the cabin. So we went back to the cabin. But that whatever was underneath that tree was the talk of the night. Like, we couldn't stop talking about it right. half the night. Up, right? Wake up the next morning. First thing we do, first chance, let's go back and look. So we go running back up to where the tree was, the tree. There's nothing underneath it. In fact, it's covered with pine needles. Like, so no sign at the ground had ever been disturbed at all right. before. So we were 12, 13. I'm in my late 40s. Me and Mike still talk about this story to this day and wonder what, what that was and what was going on. It is, and those two events combined have just started this whole kind of passion hobby that's kind of becoming like a profession. And uh, I've just started asking questions. What is going on in the world around us? Because clearly something is. Right. And like all people who invest, we want to know. Um, and we, there's a variety of, we come up with different theories. We keep looking. The more we look, the more questions. And it's just been a fascinating kind of little Side right. projects has turned into kind of a full time job. So, so those I are the have, two things. I have to ask. So, you guys have talked about this for 20, 30 years at this point. What do you think it was? If, if you had to say, in, in everything that you've learned to date and all the things that you know now versus you did when you were 12, mm -hmm. what do you think it was? Well, I got, I got kind of two theories on that, uh, depending. It could have been like a time slip. Think, you know, we're, like mm -hmm. science is already showing that there's multiple timelines, even multiple multiple dimensions. So right. if you look at it that way, something could have popped in and then popped back out at that one moment. 
Um, I have a friend of mine, Chris Bowes, who's indigenous, and I was talking to him about it. Right, um, right. With us on a, a, a Bigfoot hunt uh, a filming that we did. And he's like, dude, that's the little people. And I'm like, what's that? And he goes, well, there's more than just Bigfoot. There's all these spirits of the forest that come out. And at night, they kind of they go back into their into the other side. And sometimes if they don't make if they're not going to make it back in time, they they set camp up somewhere. So he says so that was like the was little it people. Little or was it like a full size person lean to? No, it was small. <clears throat> Sorry, oh. it was small. Like I mean, it was it was almost like toy size. You know what I mean? Like fairy toys. sized. Yeah. Right. Like woodland so, fairy sized, maybe. Ooh. Kind of. So he's like, it's little people. So they they, they got one wasn't going to make it back at nighttime. So he set up camp, and when he showed the next day, he'd packed up and gone home. Well, so I like that theory. That's a pretty cool one. It <laughs> like, is. I For, I try Jason, not to. I, before we go yeah. on, anybody? Sadly, there's a lot of people that do does not understand the word. Um, can you explain what indigenous means? Indigenous. Oh, indigenous. Yeah, it, it's huh. it's First Nations, Aboriginal, Native. It's the latest word in Canada that we we use yeah. now. Uh, First, not it, just it, Canada, it, but yeah, but all over, right? Yeah. So and it, it, it's kind of the now you can't say, but it, Aboriginal, First Nations. Yeah. So sort of Native belief systems. Yeah. Um, that they had, and, and I mean, and as as with you know natives anywhere. They have so many stories and so many different creatures that relate to the woods. So Chris is saying that that was like one of their little people legends, but he believes it, and and they believe it wholeheartedly that that these beings are out there, right? And they they're they're with oh, yeah. Bigfoot out in the woods, yeah. Um, and it makes sense to me I, as someone who likes to believe in that kind of stuff. I, I hate answering a question with another question or with an unknown, trying to describe an unknown with another unknown. But what's wrong uh, with that? That means you're questioning the basics yeah so it, i guess it's no different than think, thinking something beamed in from another dimension it's just a different yeah. way of looking at it yeah. right so well, and i think everything that we do jason is kind of unknown you know that's the whole point of what it is that we're doing is that we don't know for sure any of this that we're doing we're trying to help figure it out so mm -hmm. you know we we do our best we gather the information we put that data together and eventually somewhere down the road it's going to all click and people are going to go now here's the proof yeah <laughs> exactly right yeah. and, and i think it's funny because like you know 48 year old me would love to go back to 12 year old me and just be like before you go back out get a camera you know what i mean right? like, take a picture of it <laughs> yeah 48 48 you don't look 48 thank you <laughs> <laughs> One day it's going to catch up to me like Dick Clark, I think. You know what I mean? Like uh, it never caught up with Betty White. We're all good. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That's true, yeah, too. Deal. Yeah, that's true. We oh, are, wait, wait. Deal. Before we go on, and then, Kelly, you can have all the time you want. Well, my okay. my segment will take up four minutes, and then you can ask all the questions you want. Okay. <laughs> I want to see if Jason learned anything. In the past, oh, eight oh, weeks. oh, 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 that's right. There was a he test must have last failed time. the test last time. Well, no, no I not failed, it. he did not <laughs> fail, but I just want to see if he learned anything. She, she'll she tell you it's not a pass or fail, Jason, but it is. Oh, I'm so, sure it is. No, I did. <laughs> I told him, I'm so I don't know you, but I'm silently judging you. Yep, yep, you know. So. If she was silent about it, you know. Oh, oh, it's, it's not, <laughs> I don't even actually. If you re-listen to the episode, I think I don't even think I was silent. Well, I, <laughs> I like to think I'm silently doing anything, but no. <laughs> All right, Jason, you ready? Sure. All right, this this or that investigator yes. or hunter? Oh, okay, uh, investigator. All right. Data or evidence? Evidence. Provoking or no way? No way. <laughs> Even when she's silent, she's speaking words, doesn't she? I know. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm just, I'm also trying to remember what he said. Last, I haven't written in front of me what he said last time, but I'm trying not to look. That's, That's why I'm looking it. here. All right, residential or commercial? Uh, both. Orb or dust? Dust. Recorder or video? 
Uh, recorder. Demon or asshole ghost? Asshole ghost. All right. Same exact answers. So I'm going to have to have you back every single time. Until <laughs> <laughs> you get it right, damn it. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's the second question every time. Evidence I know, versus data. data. And evidence, right? Evidence that's what versus... we call it up here is evidence. That's yeah. what we... That's, well, that's what we yeah, and call... we do... You'll hear a lot of people around here call it evidence too. Yeah. Yeah. And and I hate to do that. And and my buddy Sean, because he, like he, like he says, he does with law enforcement. So he says evidence is only what you can show in a court of law. And we can't show anything in a court of law that we do, right? It wouldn't hold up. Well, we can, but but it's not going to hold up. It's not going to hold up. So what has to hold up in a court of law? So I mean, sure, data is accurate, but we just seem to call it evidence for whatever inexplicable reason. Yeah. So we do have a few questions in chat. So I'm going to start She's throwing some questions She's changing the subject so you don't hate me. See that? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Never. Never. Why would I do that? Come on. Um, what is your most and least favorite piece of equipment or gear? Oh, most and least favorite. Um, I really like, I like the recorder. I mean, the digital recorder is kind of the cornerstone of what we use. It, it's mm-hmm. it's what we use to get everything, and it's the least fallible, I think, if that makes sense. If you got a good one, so I really enjoy that. Um, my least favorite. We use it a lot, and we've we've got some good <laughs> stuff out of it. <laughs> but the spirit box is is it's something. It's 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 so it's love, like, so controversial. It's love hate relationship. Yes. It really we've got is. Some, we've got phenomenal stuff. Like, and not just like a yes or no answer. We've got like, you know, intelligent responses to questions mm-hmm. with voices that have been repeated where they have this, the noise stops and you can hear it clear as day. But there's always that part of me because you are picking up on radio frequencies that right. thinks it's some asshole trucker on the side of the road with his CB yep. just like, I'm going to mess with these guys. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Or Che on the CB. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would if I was a trucker and I'm listening. I'm like, what are these idiots doing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, get so, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note, before she goes on with the question, we we as a team um, like to. It's not just that one spirit box. It has to be other stuff going on. Yeah. Do you guys base that same thing? We, like, you can't just get a. Hey, how you ask, how old are you? I'm 12. If you get the number 12, we don't know if it's coincidence or not until you get other stuff going on. Do you guys still? We do a whole bunch. Like we do research before we go in as much yeah. as we can to get as much data to back it up. We use, um, like we use, we use the cameras. We use audio recording equipment, like multiple audio, like cameras and audio recording equipment. Um, we use laser grids, like we're using every sort of tool that we've got. And then that, what, what we find, the data that we find, we then go out and I like that. Of, that, right? uh-huh. Uh-huh. substantiate that through further research and the research we have. So we're not just relying, oh, the spirit box said it's 12, so it must be a 12-year-old boy. You know what I mean? Like right. we, we want to go out and find, like we've gotten stuff on the spirit box, like names that we've been able to track back to like, okay, you know what? Like here's this case of some spirit in this house named Sandra is hanging around around the kids. And for some reason we can smell smoke. Well, we, we've learned through investigating that, you know, a few blocks over there was a girl named Cassandra who died in a house fire, who was a babysitter that cared for young children. So then it sounds like, well, Sandra is maybe Cassandra. There's a house. You know what I mean? Like we try to build more than just going on what we're told. We try to find a a reason. So do you check out, like if you get one thing on one piece of equipment, do you, try to wait till something else happens or do you investigate every little lead? Uh, we'll kind of go in like, cause we usually get like a, you know, an evening or a day. So we go in and we investigate as much as we can at that one time. We'll go back out, review what we found, try to find, substantiate that or you know, debunk it. Yeah. If what we can sort of pull out that way. And then if, if we can, if, they, if the people want us back, we go back again with the, what we found out, present it to them, and then even continue our investigation to see if what we find the second time backs up what we found the first or if it's something completely different or if nothing happens. So we try to be as thorough as possible, and even before going in, as thorough as possible in terms of 
interviewing the people, finding out if, you know, there's any history of mental health problems, <laughs> he said that alcohol abuse, place. substance abuse, or these people, like if you walk in, I've walked into homes where people are talking about they're being haunted, and there's like occult posters on the wall and every book on every the subject. It's, right? Yeah, and, exactly. And it's just like, you guys kind of want something to be here, it feels like. You know, like, so oh, we try to be as the hardest. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The ones that want so desperately to have their house be haunted by something evil. It's like, oh, God. Actually, Um, that's not the hardest because I have no problem telling them, this is how I feel. This is what you're representing. The hardest ones are the ones that truly believe there is a haunting in their house or they're being haunted and they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not lying, but they truly believe it whether it's mental health whether it, i i cried the first time i had to tell somebody there's nothing here we have spent yeah. 16 weeks here there's nothing here <laughs> you we, know we promise you there's nothing and I've, we've had that happen too yeah, yeah. The, the that's people are almost thing. crushed yeah they're almost defeated by that but it's like there's nothing here we found nothing and everything suggests it's all in your head yeah how do you yeah. how do you word that that's what so people watching TV, when we go to Waverly Hills or we go to Penhurst Asylum, people don't understand that there's actually in the background there's real people involved in this. Hmm. Well, yeah, and and they they want answers, and some of them are so convinced they're not even scared. They're just so convinced there's something in their house they wanted that to be it. And I mean, I I've always yeah. I was a journalist for ten years on the crime beat, so I just I'm. I'm I'm blunt. I'm like, I'm sorry. We found nothing. We don't think there's actually anything here. Yeah. Right. And some people want it so badly that if, even if there wasn't something there, they'll manifest something there. Mm-hmm. So there is that negativity almost around. And, and trying to get them to understand, if you stop believing that there's something here, the, the little things that are happening here and there are going to stop. But exactly. Those exactly. ones are tough. And even if there is some legitimately something there and you don't want it there, just stop paying attention as much as you can. Sure. It can be hard, right? Or and it's because it wants if you stop paying attention, it'll go away. Or if you just say, Look, my house, you're not welcome here anymore. If you are stern That's enough, my you biggest can thing right there. Yeah. 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 You can convince it to go. I want to when it comes to residential, and you guys can speak differently, but when it comes to res- residential investigations whether it's something there or not, real something there or not, you want to empower these people mm-hmm. to stop it. And, and that, if it's mental health, then you empower them in a different way. But even if it's a real ghost, you teach them, show your intent, show your... <clears throat> That's my big thing. It's all about empowerment and intent. Yeah, it's empowering the people who, who are in the house to take control of the situation. And, and, and you're right, Shay, even with mental health, that like you can choose at some point to do something about it. You can. It's and, not easy, but you can make that choice, and that yeah. will stop it, too. And understanding can be such a huge part of that empowerment. You know, if you can help them understand what it is that's going on there or who maybe is there with them, maybe that situation becomes not so scary or not so mm-hmm. dangerous feeling. and. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had the conversation of think of it like a roommate that you can't see. You may yeah. not always get along on everything and you're going to hear each other on occasion. But do you really want to evict this roommate? Is it that bad? You know? Yeah. No, very true. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. I agree. Um, I suffered from mental health. Um, and I've suffered. Yeah. And oh, it- sorry. I couldn't resist. I don't care. See, I'm at the point where I don't care. But I've also suffered from quote unquote hauntings for a, a lack of better term. So I understand the difference between understanding what's what. Um, mm-hmm. Great, graciously, gratefully. I've never been too far overboard either way that they've never. Come on. But I can't, I can't imagine that person that suffers from that mental illness that's so bad that they don't know right from wrong or um, Real reality from. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant. Yeah. 
And then, so, like, a lot of people like, oh, you have mental health, you're, you're not there. It's not, it's not hauntings. I think the opposite. I think it could, I think it could be the opposite. Well, there's, there's been cases even where someone has been schizophrenic and believed that they were possessed and they found the best way to treat it was actually with an exorcism. Yeah. The person believed because that they, they were, that that's that's right, so strongly, right? So they just went in and they did, and it worked because yeah. it was so disassociated from who they were yeah. that it worked. So, I mean, I think it can go, it, you can go that direction sometimes with it. I mean, I wouldn't want to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like no. educated enough in any of that to do it. Me neither. Nope. Right. But I mean, but if, he, if that works, great. But it goes to that same theory of if you give somebody and tell them that, give somebody something and say, this is going to protect you. If they believe it's going to, then they feel safer, you know? Yep. So yeah, it's kind of along that same time that. Kelly mindset. always joke about a bagel or. Yeah. Or, like a bagel. We so I I host when we first normal. met. When we first met, she was like, "No, these crystals will protect you." Or the host was saying, "She didn't have any crystals when I first met her." What kind I of still crazy don't. person are you? I still don't. <laughs> Why are we friends? I because because I'm sexy and I know it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot it was a sex appeal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but so uh, Mama Pat, who's in chat, and I, we host these Psychic and Paranormal Expos, and we'll do panels all the time, and we came across the conversation of exorcisms, and yeah, that was kind of an example we got, is that if you think you're possessed and you believe that getting hit by a bagel is going to cast out that demon, I'm going to chuck a bagel at you, and you're going to be all better, you know? For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Grief is so powerful, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. when it comes to this stuff, so... No, that's okay. Whatever works in the end. You know, yeah. So speaking of beliefs, you're venturing off on Bigfoot now? Tell yes. And that. aliens. we got to get him both. We don't have... His wife will kill us. Okay, yeah. but, but big... We, yeah, we got to watch our time. But yeah, I, 20 I, so minutes. We Bigfoot, Bigfoot and aliens. 20 minutes. Bigfoot is what I wanted to talk about, though, because Chris right. and I have just been talking. We need to go squash hunting sometime. Oh, we gotta okay. we got a place to go. we got to get this done. So I'm out. And, yep. Bigfoot, because yeah. no? like I said, we're in Bigfoot country. Yeah. And so we were doing these ep these episodes about ghosts. And we did like a bunch of them. And it's like, well, you know, let's do something different. I mean, we're in Bigfoot country. I had that experience growing up with the, the finding the, the little campsite in the woods. Little, little foot. Little foot, yeah, little people. So let's let's do it. So that's what we did. We, over the summer and into the fall, we went on a number of these big, these squatch hunts. Uh, with different people. We went with Chris Bowes. He's the, the Aboriginal storyteller and artist. I heard his experiences, and he explained his belief system. We went with a guy named Mike, who every year for 20 years has been going fishing at the same lake, and he's out in his boat. And every time he gets to this one corner of the lake, he starts hearing wood knocks, and they persist until he leaves. And it's happened every year that he's gone out there. So, of course, we went out there with him and got in the boat and went around, and then we went on one kind of final hunt on our own in the, the middle of nowhere at night. And we tried like everything. Like we, we did like the like recordings of baby crying. We did the calls, the knocks. We even broke out the spirit box in the woods. And we just filmed yeah. all of it, which was tons of fun and, you know, got a little bit eerie at times. Um, and we've compiled it into, I think it's going to be a three-parter episode. Um, we were able to bring in Ken Gerhardt, who's a cryptozoologist. So we've got him did interviews with him that we can use to back it up. And then Shannon Legro from into the fray radio. Cause she's a big, Bigfoot fan and researcher and we put compiled them in. And so we're pretty excited. The first part's going to come out later this month. Uh, and then there's two more parts to come after that. And it was, it was great. Like, cause going looking for ghosts is one thing. I've done that a lot. I've never gone looking for a monster before. Uh, and it's always just this whole new dynamic. Um, it was just really interesting. And I mean, the, the, the absolute, most unnerving part of it, though, is being in the woods at night and playing the baby crying because that's supposed to lure them out. So we went out middle of nowhere. We played this baby crying and just killed all the lights and just sat in the dark listening to this baby cry for like eight to ten minutes. And yeah. uh, that does something to your psyche after that, especially having been a parent. <laughs> like it's right. just kind of, yeah. So that was neat. Uh, that was an experience. Um, we picked up some interesting stuff on the spirit box in the middle of nowhere. Like the first minute we turned it on. You know, pitch black, it's raining, and something just goes like, help me. And they're oh, just wow. in the middle of the woods. Yeah, it was it was really, really groovy. And then I don't want to say what we found 
going on the lake in the boat because I want people to watch. But that was kind of an experience right. too, right? And I was going to say, without telling us details, did you catch anything? We think we might have got something. Mm-hmm. We're hopeful. It sounded. It was pretty. Con- it was pretty convincing. Um, oh, unexpected. Careful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, uh, but it was. Conv- it was. <laughs> it was convincing enough that like it made like sort of the, the three excursions really, really worthwhile. Uh, okay. And it was just. It was just so different to do that. Uh, we're really excited about it. The footage looks really good. We learned something. Uh, and we do want to do aliens. Like we want to get, when we can get back right now, we can't do anything. If we gather publicly, we can be fined 2,500 bucks each right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're hoping that ends in February and we can start going out again. Like even uh, just three of you guys? Yeah. No public wow. gatherings. I know. Yeah. It's Canada, a bit silly. Is, Canada is hardcore. We are. Uh, it's, it's silly though, because my son can go to school that's He's not allowed to have any of those friends over. There's no logic in any of this. Come on now. No, no. no. Uh, which I don't want to get into because that's a whole yeah. other topic. But, no, but, it, uh, yeah, it's not allowed right. on the show. So as, as soon as we can, though, we're going to go out and do an, an alien episode. We know someone who's like a UFOlogist and goes out. So we're going to do something with them. And there's been sightings around where I live. The, and so we do, can do a do whole. Do they use thing. Tide detergent to track aliens? The only person I've ever known. What? Yes, the, the, see, <laughs> the only person I've ever known to do this in person, like face to face, like use Tide detergent to track, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, How even for me, do you use Tide detergent. How I would that work? I, if you figure it out, please text me. <laughs> maybe it's they're chewing on the pods, and it helps them find things. I don't. Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Before the tide thing, uh, we cut off conversation before the tide thing. But I don't even understand how does it like? It's supposed to like. I, I don't even feel I bad mentioning it. I like so dumb. Like what? Huh? So, anywho. <laughs> Well, I'm not that um, I'm not that smart. So if I'm I, wrong, I'm asking other people. But I have not found one person that said laundry detergent can track aliens, uh, uh, not, except no. this oh. one dumbass. <laughs> that also said that that's how fat, you really feel. Wait, later, <laughs> later on, you also said fat women shouldn't be in the field because they're stupid. Oh, so the, you know. Oh, well, this person should stay away from me. Anyway. Anywho. Let's yeah. change topics. Yeah. So you're from Canada. Yes. What are some of your coolest places that you've been to up around there? And, uh, let me ask this question first. If you're comfortable saying whereabouts in Canada are you from? We're I, I live currently in a place called Kamloops, British Columbia. It's about three and a half hours northeast of Vancouver. Okay. British Columbia. Um, and it's kind of one of the, the sort of cornerstones in the interior. Every highway train passes through Kamloops. Okay. Lots, lots going on here. Um, and so where we are, I mean, in, in my hometown, there's a place called Tra- Tronquil Sanitarium, which was a mental institution that shut down in the 80s when they deinstitutionalized everything. And that's a lot of urban legends related to that. And that's kind of the first place I ever went on a paranormal investigation because I knew the caretaker and he let me in a group in and we just started fiddling around. Not knowing what we were doing, um, surprisingly, none of us died in the experience because it's old buildings and not very. Safe. Um, but it was a pretty fascinating place. So I, I was need to go there. I wouldn't want to go back because it's just everything's falling apart. So that's one. Uh, Bailey House is another one, and even a couple episodes of We Want to Believe we filmed there, and it's an old late eighteenth century historical home that's now run by the the sort of Merritt Community Group. And they let people tour it. Um, but it's full of like just antique furniture and these dolls, these like early oh, 1900s. No. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No. Full of it. And I've done investigations there. And we've had toys go flying off shelf in the toy room. We had a door, you know, those pocket doors that go in the wall, closed with yeah, such yeah, force yeah. that it got stuck. Um, we saw a shadow person downstairs. We caught that on a laser grid. Like this place it just goes off. When it, when it goes off, it goes off. Yeah, if you and guys ever want to know how to make Kelly shit her pants, have a doll thrown at her. Ugh. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, no. no I, I no, nearly no. shit my pants. Like, it was just like... Next time yeah. I see her, I'm going to throw a doll at her. Just well, exactly. Her. Find like we'll a, see you a, do a it. Like but... early 1900s doll. Um, so I really like Bailey House. There's another place 
down in Vancouver. And it's a residential school um, that's long since been closed. I don't know if you guys know the history of residential schools, but that, that's where, where Native children were taken and, and you know, North Americanized. Um, and, you know, there's been, you know, physical, emotional, sexual abuse occurred at these places. Children died there. Horrible places. And there's this one that we go to frequently and something always happens. Like you, we get multiple activity in, in one single evening. Uh, so I really like going there as well. But by North Americanized, as you worded it, this is when they broke. Somebody help me. Just to explain what that means. It's where, where they oh, broke. They decommissioned like all of the, the homes. The, yeah. Basically, if I'm understanding it right, like, all the money went away. And they weren't able to keep all of these uh, homes open. The rules got a whole lot stricter about who could be there and what kind of. Yeah, but they um, took like. Uh, Native Americans, is that the right word? No. They, they, take, they take natives, and yeah. they instead of like allowing them to speak their language, dress their yeah. way, oh, have their okay, beliefs, you're talking something totally different. Yeah. Sorry. They would take them and make them, they'd make them Christians, they'd have to dress like the rest of you know, everyone else. They'd cut their hair off. Language. Yeah, that's yeah, totally different. Hair off. And yeah, yeah. It was awful, awful things that went on there. Um, so th this makes sense that this building would have like a lot of trauma and a lot it's of negative like, oh, energy yeah. built up. A lot of pissed off natives. Oh yeah. And so yeah. it gets a lot of interesting activity that goes on there. So it, it's a really neat place to go in that sense, but it's very, tra you can feel it. You walk the halls and you can just feel the tragedy the that happened there. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that happened there. So Jason, what's your wife's name? Jessica. All right. So we have 10 minutes before Jessica hates us all. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. So, I got questions, though. Go, have you, if you have 10 minutes, I won't ask another one. Okay, shh. Have He'll be back. <laughs> he will be back. I can guarantee it. So, have you ever got a chance to investigate any place in the U.S., then? I haven't, and I want to, and I've been invited. Especially, like, oh, you know, dude, like, it's we fun. can hook you up. Well, I'd, and I, I so would love to, because there's so many places down there. I mean, like, I'd love to go to, there's so many that I'd love to go to, and it's just, all this really took off early in 2012, like in terms of the show and, you know, starting to connect with people. Um, and of course, the COVID hit right at the same time. So as soon as this is all over and the borders open, I can't wait to go to the States and, and so, investigate people like yourselves. And, you know, I, there's so much cool stuff down there I want to hit up. Do you have a bucket uh, list? I mean, Waverly, like, I mean, that's one that always comes up, right? Um the Queen Mary, I think, would be really oh my gosh, cool. Yes. Yes. Right? Um, California, Kentucky, you're like all over the map. All right, keep going. You gotta Tombstone, get an East Coast in there. <laughs> Tombstone, East Coast, East Coast, anywhere in the East Coast. It's, right. it's just like every two minutes, there's something, you gotta right? Get the East like, Coast and the Midwest. We'll hook you up, definitely. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I mean, I'm hoping, you know, knock on wood, this time next, this time next year, we'll be able to do that. I think that would be oh, really no, cool. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so, because I've got Waverly booked for June, so they better clear nice. stuff up by then. Nice. So that's kind of like the, the three big ones, but I'm, I'm open to anything. I like, like with, when you know Shay asked the question, residential, commercial, I, I love investigating both. They're both so different, oh, yet similar. I mean, no, they're, they're just, just two different open. things. That's why it's a joke. Like, most of it's a joke. <laughs> I, there's a couple questions in there I judge people for, but residential, commercial, they're two different things, and you know, but provoking, no provoking. No, provoking is just stupid. Yeah, like I, I don't understand. That's what that's one thing I hate in all those shows when they do that. Yeah. And it's just like, come on, like you're asking uh, for trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a reason he gets possessed on a weekly basis. You know, uh, <laughs> I mean, can't on. think of a more. Uh, Guy. Well, if he would yeah. leave his shirt on, maybe he would not get possessed. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but how can I show off my rippling pectorals otherwise? <laughs> Did you ever see him on Wheel of Fortune? No. Oh, when he what? was super young? He was on no, Wheel of Fortune. No, it was Jeopardy. No, it was Wheel of Fortune. Him and his sister. Jeopardy. Him and oh. his sister were on Wheel of Fortune. Check he it out. He oh. was a nerd. They lost, Holy but cow. check it out. <laughs> Anywho, what are we down to? The clock's ticking. Okay, oh, yeah. Darren had like a million and twelve questions. Oh, Did Darren. We... All right. Uh, yeah. Jason, you'll yeah. come. Will you come back? 
Of course I will. All right. So, oh, he is a sucker for punishment. No, I wouldn't ask live what well, I would, but I believe <laughs> him. <laughs> I want to ask one more of his question because he was so yeah, good about it. Um, Here's a good one. What's okay. your best advice to give to new investigators? Best advice to give to new investigators. Find someone that knows what they're doing and hook up with them and go on investigations with them and figure out the right way to do it. Because yeah. there is a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And if you're one of those people that's like, yeah, I want to be a ghost hunter, right? Because I watched all this stuff on TV. You're going to go in and it's not going to go very well, I don't think. From my own experience, when I first started doing this, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I was agree. more thrill-seeking. I was making mistakes. You know what I mean? I was putting myself in yeah. positions of risk, not only because of anything spiritual, just because I'm in a wrong place that something could go horribly wrong. So find someone that knows what they're doing, hang out with them, learn from them, learn the proper way to do an EVP session, figure out some of the gear and just go in calmly, respectfully, like you just, like you're doing research on site and just find out, you know, just and do a proper investigation. Um, that would be my best ad advice to give to someone starting out. And I would maybe even take that a step further to say, find a few someones who know what mm -hmm. they're doing, because I know I investigate different than other people do. Yes. And I know that some people love this piece of equipment. So there are people out there who live, breathe, and die by spirit boxes. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I have trouble keeping my supper down when they're turned on, you know? So, <laughs> um, and it, it's, it's not that I don't believe them and believe in them. It's just something about the, the noise or the frequency or something that gives me horrible vertigo. Um, but anyways, um, you know, yeah, that's that's amazing advice. Find somebody who knows what they're doing and then find a second person maybe who knows yeah. what they're doing too because everybody has different ways of doing things and it, it just gives you some different viewpoints of how to do it and how to be safe. Yeah, and that's the big thing, right? Like there's, there's safety from, you know, a spiritual point of view, I believe. Yeah. So good, there's also safe. safety, like you said, make sure where you're walking so you don't hit that soft spot on the floor and land in the basement. Oosh, exactly, right? Or get asbestos, a lung full of asbestos, or right. mm -hmm. CO2, or you know what I mean, like carbon monoxide, sorry, and you know, like there's just so many things that can go wrong. Or the raccoon jumps out of the hole in the wall and attacks <laughs> your face, sir. <or> exactly. <laughs> that can happen. And has so. happened. Well, not attacked the person in the face, but comes scurrying out of a hole in the wall. Oh, yeah. And it scares the shit out of you. So it, oh. it, that that's the best thing I would say to anybody starting out. Like, All right. just gotta I be also careful. have to add, Kelly and I are like best friends. Yeah. And we don't agree on everything, but we oh, God, no. respect each other's opinions and we listen and we bounce mm -hmm. ideas off each other. So that's also a good yeah. thing. You're, it's you're very true. Yeah, it is. Out there, honey. Like, yeah. if you're looking for investing in the paranormal, be ready to, like, like, not everybody has the same opinion or belief system in yeah. regards to, but respect each other and learn from each other. Oh, that's it, how you become better at it. Put your big pants on because if you if you are on Facebook and you're a paranormal investigator, you're gonna get shit on. Oh god, oh, yes. yes. People are going to talk behind your back, yeah. and the really sad part about it is, the more I don't want to say the more genuine you are about it, but the more real you are about it, the more you get talked about, mm -hmm. and that's unfortunate. It's like yeah. if you're one of these who's gonna stand up and say, you know, guys, not everything is something. You get these looks like, well, oh, yeah. absolutely. that can't possibly be true. Yeah. It's like, well, okay, but you can go ahead a, and believe your little dust orb of dust yeah. is something, but I'm going to call it as I say it. Yeah. Again, Kelly and I, we disagree on, I don't want to say a lot, but enough. But considering how good of friends we are, we do disagree on a lot of things. We do disagree <laughs> on a lot, but we respect each other's opinion because none of this is real. Ah, uh, proof. It's real, but none of this is fact. None of this is science. None of it's so like we we discuss it and we put up with. All right, you believe this, I believe this, and let's compare and notes. It's perfectly, yeah, and it's perfectly fine for me to say I hear what you said. I maybe still don't agree with you, but that's okay. Yeah. Why can't more right? people be like that? That's my last just question. Just amazing people, Shay, because we are fan. <laughs> we are not. That's bullshit. So I'm asking. We're I'm, 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 I'm going to ask Jason. Why can't more okay. people accept that? I think because people 
I think it just comes down like we, we everyone's got their ego, right? That's and it. Everyone, That's the word right there. Everyone likes to, yeah, they, everyone, and everyone likes to think they're right, and it lets them feel like they've got some kind of semblance of control over their lives when they have none, none. Yeah. You know, the more you look into the what we look into the paranormal, the more you realize that we have so little control over what's going on around us. There's things yeah, all around us all the time. The ego can't the rest fall into place, or not for everybody. I think so, not for everybody, because some people don't want to let that ego go, right? And I think we're just seeing that more now in this. And I think part, I mean, part of the problem right now, and this is a whole other topic, but so many people are scared because what's happening in the world around them, and they don't have any control over it, so they're just latching on to whatever they can. And fair enough, but I hope when this is done and things transition into whatever the new normal is going to be, that people can let some of that go and just start listening. Because when I grew up, it was okay to have a discussion between two people, not get along. No, not, not, not that we don't get along, but not agree, but you can still get along. I don't see why yeah. we can't still. That's I have no idea why. Totally but. different show. Next time. <laughs> when the world opens back up and people can spend a little less time in front of their keyboards. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe All right. the world will get a little better. All right. That's Jason has fault. one minute before dinner. Jessica, thank you for letting us borrow your husband. <laughs> Did you ask him Love the questions him? last time or do you need to ask him this time? Huh? Did you ask him the famous questions last time or do we need to ask him this time? Oh, yeah. What's the one thing you would never want haunted? Never want haunted? Yeah. And we, we're we explicit, so you can go anywhere. Yeah, you if want. you haven't figured it out, <laughs> my sailor mouth this evening, I don't know what's wrong with me, but. I would. That I wouldn't want haunted. Yeah. We've had bug um, plugs, we've had vibrators, oh we've had. Oh my God. We oh, had, uh, this is a whole part. network question, not just this show. It's us all over, so there's no. I would hope. That at least at the end of a long day, when my child's asleep and, you know, I get the house to myself because my wife's doing her own thing, and I go to sit down and watch a movie on the TV, that my TV wouldn't be haunted. So I could just relax, you know what I mean? And not suddenly have to deal with switching and channels yet, in the middle of And stuff. then he sits down and turns on probably a ghost show. So, yeah. Probably, yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. To <laughs> That's tonight, why I was right? laughing. It was. <laughs> I want to watch Zach Baggins. Why do you keep changing the channel on me? Come on. Like, <laughs> well, because there's intelligence somewhere. Exactly. Jeff Cruz, there's intelligent life out there. <laughs> I know. I started I it shouldn't off. say that. I actually started rewatching it just because. But... It's oh. entertaining. It's, Demon House is entertaining. I don't the believe a lift of it, but it's entertaining. Right? I yeah. think that's a problem. We're at 9 o'clock, so we have to end the show, but that's the issue. People don't know the difference between entertainment and paranormal investigating, period. Exactly. Yeah, there is a paranormal difference. Paranormal investigating is nothing at all like you see on TV. It is yeah. boring yeah. 90% of the time. So. Exactly. So, Which is what we try to show on our show, at least. So, yeah, that, I have yeah. no issue yeah. saying douchebaggins. <laughs> <laughs> he's a smart man. I will not take that away from him, but he's not a paranormal investigator. At Agreed. least as seen on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. Where can people find you? Yeah, Jessica's uh, going to get find, mad here. Dennis done. Uh, on, on Facebook, you know, we can find We Want to Believe the Series on there. Um, as well, we're on Instagram. Same thing. We Want to Believe the Series. And you can find episodes at uh, Joe Blow Horror Videos. The book, I Want to Believe, is currently available on Amazon.ca and .com and on Barnes & Noble. That's where you can find us. That is. And you'll come back, right? Absolutely. That if not, great. you know he's lying. <laughs> I said it on actual <laughs> national radio, so I will come back. He said it uh, last so time, and he was ba he's been back. All right. If you need to go get dinner, go ahead. We'll close up here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I ladies. love you. I respect you. I love you, too. Thank you. Have Take good care. Good night. You, too. Good night. Bye-bye. <sighs> okay. All Hopefully right, Kelly. we didn't get him to force on the line here or something. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, if I promise something, I try to make it happen. So, all right, you want to give shout outs? Sure. Let me go back here. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Clear it out of the bottom. I can't even. All right. I can't even do it. My phone. Smell. I got it. I'm on it. 
All right. We had Miss Mel, Darren, Mama Deb, that Shay lady. Somebody let her in there. Uh, no, which is no worse than the Kelly person that got in there. Whew. Uh, Stephanie, Mr. Matt, of course, was in there. Mama Pat. Um, uh, scrolling. Luna popped in. I'm scrolling. Luna! Yeah, Any she music while I'm scrolling. Miss Cynthia was there for a little bit, and then she was falling asleep, so she had to go. I don't blame her. I'm falling crazy asleep. Crazy lady gets up. You people who get up before the sun's up, you just, you crazy people. Mr. Darren, of course. I can't remember if I said him, but we're going to say him twice because he deserves it. He does. Mr. Derry popped in. Mr. Chad. Hello, Chad. I saw Maybe Chad. I saw Chad on TikTok. Hold on. Oh, did you know? I saw Chad on TikTok dancing. So I have downloaded TikTok, but TikTok, but I've never actually I, like created I know, an account. I don't, I don't know, know if you it, have to, but I'm so. not positive it was him. I'm pretty sure it was him. I think it was him. I saw him. He's like. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Anyways. Any chance that man gets to shake his stuff, he's doing it. Uh, it was just his head. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. It's but I'm good. pretty sure I saw him on TikTok. He's going to message me and be like, what the hell are you talking about? And then I'll tell him what channel and he'll be like, oh, yeah, it was me. Yeah. <sighs> okay. What do we think? Ah. Uh, so next week, join us, Kelly and I, alone. Oh my God! For We're our doomed. hundredth episode on this network. One hundred. They've one. allowed us to do this one hundred times. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Am I supposed to say Shay? You fired? Like. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard the boss is kind of a bitch. I am. <laughs> but that's just crazy to me because how many months did we take off? Like, um, on, on well, the... we take off sometime usually every summer, isn't it? It's yeah, but I took take off, off so. months after the death yeah. of the family. So, like, it's just crazy. A hundred episodes on this I network. It's a like... hundred episodes of joy. It I is. Know. That's it why it doesn't seem like that many because it's flown by and it's been a blast. It is. It has and been. Even, even weirder, most guests come back. <laughs> they just keep coming. Actually, every guest would come back if I would let them. There's certain ones that. But every. There's never been a guest that has ever said, I won't come back. Oh, well. Except that one that we had to delete the episode or hide the well, episode. Well, that's because that one deserved. We can talk and about that if you want to hear about the sh the one show we hit. We we should talk about that next show. Yes, yeah. we, without we names, we will. We should try to think back, like what's been our favorite episodes, what's been our least favorite episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we will. Because I think we're gonna agree on our least favorite episode. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because it's not, you can't hear it. Because you can't get to it anymore. No. So, I think without mentioning names, I think we can, uh, yeah, so, check us out. But, yeah, baby, um, check Jason's us out. Jason's awesome, isn't he? He's good. He's fun. He is fun. Yeah, I had, like, a million more questions, and Darren had a million more questions, but yeah. don't make it too late to suffer. That's just poor. No, poor no. He's, he's, uh, Pacific time, so he's three hours behind. Um, that's why he'll be back again, though. So write him down. Definitely. I had Definitely. to. I had to re-listen to last time he was on to narrow down my questions. Yeah. Well, and who knows? Maybe we'll have to reach out to him and see if he wants to come on Traveler's Moon with us sometime. Sorry. Did you freak? Okay. No, I. Wasn't I sure if, like froze in person, or if your screen froze, but you just stopped moving. I was. I, I'm blind. I was trying to read a message I got. <laughs> All right, guys, check us out. Um, next Friday, eight Eastern, seven Central, five Pacific. Join us for a party. Hundredth episode. Um, maybe we'll be drinking. I was gonna say we may need to have another drinking game. You know. No, I can't. I'll be a diet. No, maybe. I don't know. But it will be fun. Either way. <laughs> Either way.
go well, away. We just have to drink more to make up for what you're not drinking, then. This there is what I'm hearing. There we go. We can try that. So. All right. I need some volunteers who volunteers as tribute to come back next week and drink for Shay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, my love. All right. Guys, check us out. I hope you guys have a great week. Um, great weekend. Great week. To go with what she needs. Yeah. And until then, either we will see you next week or we won't, but we hope we do. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>